Okay, let's move on to uh, our interview today, and it is with Kara Sanders. And the reason that we, we picked Kara is that given what is going on with, with Ellie and Maddie and what has also been going on now with you know, Haley Adams coming back from a break, uh, Mal O'Brien continuing to take one, and sort of just the, uh, the constant state of change, it seems, in the, on the women's side of the house is women either taking a break or maybe choosing to not go individual but go team. We wanted to get perspective from an athlete who's been in the game for a while and has kind of done both of those things and come back to compete. And that's why Cara Saunders immediately went to the top of the list. And Lauren, you were, you were able to sit down with her for about, I think, 40 minutes yesterday. She did the majority of the talking. Yeah. <laughs> but I thought she had some some really good insight. And what we're about to hear is uh, the second question that you asked her in this interview. Yeah. And we want to remind you guys that every situation is very individualized, but I think that Cara gives really great perspective because she's been in the game for so long and not just the sport has changed, but the age of the athlete has also changed. And just kind of talking about the domino effect that you see in some of these women athletes. Yeah, look, I think there's potentially a combination of both of those things. I definitely think, um, and this is very generalized, obviously, but um, generalization usually comes from like, a majority theme right so there is some validity to it um but men do generally tend to kind of push through and you know like the thing is like being a being a crossfit athlete is like a pretty good lifestyle in another sense in that like you train i guess for your job like and if they are getting paid to do it or they're kind of going to do that amount of training or whatever anyway then cool why not um then i think that I, I do think that hormonally and mentally and emotionally women can hit that burnout point a little bit more. I think there's a lot of pressure through social media and through the media of the sport for women. Um, I think there, especially as athletes, there becomes all of these extra things where about how you look and how you, you know, put yourself forward. And then that, that, that is real. Like that is real. Like there's just a little bit more um, to manage and, you know, like we, we do just function differently. I don't want to like use certain words that kind of like, I mean, I can, like I'm a mom, like I think our bodies are a little bit more sensitive to those changes. And um, I feel that personally. And uh, yeah, I think a lot of more, I think a lot more people, it just kind of took like one or two people, um, one or two women to go like, hey, I'm actually going to go do this and this is okay. Or I'm going to take a step back because this doesn't feel right and I don't feel really satisfied. Um, and then everyone kind of checks in with themselves and they're like, oh, yeah, me too. Oh, maybe I could do this better. Maybe I could feel better. And and I think like women like kind of stick together. inspired by hearing somebody and you're like, I can relate with that type deal. Yeah. Yeah, and I think women stick together like that, you know, and like we, uh, yeah, I think, look, there, there are so many factors. Like you think about too, like when we say when my generation started CrossFit, we were 20 odd. Um, now it's like 15, you know, like 14, like, well, they've started 10, but they start competing. Like, you know, my last games, I was what, 33. And, you know, I was competing against like Emma Lawson, who was like, I don't know what, like 17 or 18, you know, like, so that's crazy. And I went to my first games at maybe 23. And so I think that there is potentially a bit of time before, and that's where I say there's this bit of a generational handover too, whereas like we're kind of like on, into that next phase, which is like having babies, doing family and looking after our children. That's not to say that you can't like have goals, you can't be an athlete or whatever, but like there really is just a time to step aside that is required um, physically and like, obviously, like, I've got two kids running around right now. Like, it takes <laughs> it takes work. Um, you know, they need to be fed and looked after and, you know, bonded with and all those things. Um, and then, yeah, the, the other side is that then the, the girls that are coming through because CrossFit's been around a little bit longer are starting younger. And I think if I had have started at, like, competing at 17, oh, my gosh, like, mentally, emotionally, like, just totally would not have been ready. Like I would have been in the exact same boat. So that's where I think there's this kind of bit of a weird like handover. Um, maybe say some of these younger girls when they're like 20, like kind of close to mid twenties will be feeling a little bit better and kind of will then have their peak and, you know, um, can kind of really get themselves into the sport and really enjoy it a little bit more. Um, and then, you know, us old dogs kind of like doing other things, but um 
<laughs> yeah, for me, I'm like, look, I can go team and I can have a really enjoyable time. I can still train. I love training. It's not quite the same pressure or requirement on my body. I can still have a life. I can still make money up, you know, elsewhere and be satisfied in other ways and not be and maybe 100%. a better opportunity to make money in some instances. Totally. Like it, it yeah, it's crazy. Like I still feel like, um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I still I still feel like I've like I competed for a decade as an individual and a good one you know like I've been in that top five lots of times and then I go team and all, everyone was more excited for that and I'm like I'm like you know I've been like really good for a long time I've been working my butt off and uh everyone's oh this is so great team like and I'm like oh you just you just don't even know like I look I don't do it for the um for like the public recognition or anything like that. Like this is purely just what fits in with my life. And I love training and it is like, it is still a really good time, but it's just not the same pressure and risk. Like the last however many years, I feel like the game's really kind of shifted for me probably after maybe 2018, something like that. Um, and I'm like, I just can't put so much of myself on the line and so much risk for something that's just so uncertain and at any moment someone's going to come in and change like and it's just going to flip on its head i can't do that um mm -hmm. and can't sort of take away from other areas but obviously it's still good in a sense i think there's some work to be done in that aspect um for sure and just how that yeah just some consistency there and what that looks like um to keep it I don't know, professional. I think that's still lacking. I do. I'll say it. People will get cranky at me, but I think that's still lacking. Um, I still love it. Don't get me wrong. Like I've been a huge, I've been hanging in there for a really long time and I still have a good time, but like anything, it could always be better. Um, and there are still just a few gaps there and um, inconsistencies that make it really hard. Like I've had that many it's like instances where there's just the inconsistencies from like judging and standards and like just everything that make it really hard. So, um, yeah, look, I think maybe the dudes just kind of, they either don't care as much, <laughs> um, or maybe it's not as much of a load for them to start off with. And so with those things, they're just like, oh, whatever, you know, but maybe for us, it's just a little bit more like, it's a lot of work for a, for a female. And I've always said elite, athleticism or like elite sport is not really great for us like it's great for us mentally and it's awesome goals but like physically it's not amazing um we do it for other reasons obviously and um i think it can just kind of catch up with you after a while it has been interesting though like i didn't expect to see that many people not competing this year like it's but i i do think it's kind of like a few people made it like it's okay and i've spoken to a lot of veteran athletes before and they've all said it's one of the hardest sports to retire from because you're going to do it anyway. You're going to train anyway because we love it. You're going to go into the gym and you're going to train and you're still going to be good. Like I've heard of people like, oh, I'm still going to be good. I've been doing this for so long. So like I may as well use it. So it's really, really hard to retire and walk away from. But um, then once a couple of people are like, okay, wait, I need to, you know, look at my future. Um, and what does that look like? And what does this offer me for the future? Um, you know, and if they're at that age where there's kind of other things you need to be moving into, um, it just took one or two people to kind of start that. And then everyone's like, yeah, I think, you know, people are making a bit more of a better decision rather than just kind of like running away with it. But yeah, like I said, I also only had to train an hour and a half a day back way back when. I mean, that's Time's all I'm training changed. now, an, an hour, maybe an hour and a half, like to be in team and just be pretty good and like not stress about it too much, which is again, why I'm doing that because that's what I have to offer now. Um, and, you know, then there's the other aspect. Some people go, I'm going to go team because it's just a different challenge. It's something different mm -hmm. just to mix it up if you've been in it for a long time. But, um, or then you've got like Emily in my team who's young and it's a really good opportunity for her to get some experience with some old dogs and, you know, yeah. like spend a bit of time where she can work on some weaknesses without the pressure of being on the competition field with those weaknesses, step back and work on it, still enjoy being, you know, at the games and having that experience. Um, and yeah, then hopefully like kind of come back to individual, they can kind of do a sidestep and then come back, hopefully a little bit mm -hmm. better, smarter, you know, all of those things. But um, yeah, there's, there's no, I don't think there's one black and white. I think there's quite a few, there's quite a few who, um, 
components to it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it'll be interesting also to see what happens next year, right? Like what happens it is it kind of keeps. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting year. It's going to be fun for team. There's a lot of really cool teams. There are teams are getting more and more excited every time I see a new team come out and post who's going to be on them. So I'm I'm really excited to watch you on team this year. Thank you so much for taking the time to just give us your own perspective of what might be going on. Again, this is just one part of a much bigger conversation, but as a veteran totally. in the sport, we thought it was great to get your opinion, get your take, what you see and what you experienced yourself. So thanks for your time, Kara. Thank you for giving me the time. Apologies if it sounds a little bit messy. That's kind of where my head's at at the moment. Nope, it, makes, it makes it makes sense in here. It's real. It is raw. We have the babies, Mother Cara oh, yeah. Saunders. It's amazing. We love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Big thanks to Carl Saunders for taking the time to do that. If you're one of our uh, patrons, you'll be able to listen to that entire interview on Patreon. She also had some some great things to say just about her competitive history and why mm -hmm. she's made some of the decisions that she's made. It was a fantastic interview. I love talking to Cara because you can just say, go. And she just... <laughs> She just talks, but she's fantastic. Give her the topic and she knows what to do. <laughs> and listen, I, don't, I, I think it was great getting her perspective. I don't have a lot to offer here. And Chase said this on Death By when you guys talked about it too. Is like, yeah. this is not my situation. Uh, I, I've never dealt with something like this. But I, did, I do think it is a little bit, it was interesting enough to me to want to get someone else's perspective on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And no doubt, and you look at Carr's history too, uh, you know, as you said, Lauren, it is individualized. But Carl was an athlete who came onto the scene very quickly. Her first year in the, like pretty much her first year in the open goes to the games, breaks through as 22, 23. And then for the next 12 seasons has essentially grown up and developed it from this kind of out of nowhere, rising star in this region to someone who's made the podium, who started a family, who's had kids and started businesses. So she does kind of track as far as like the career arc that we're seeing some of these young athletes, even with Ellie and what you mentioned about how quickly she came up in the sport. So mm -hmm. there is some valuable perspective there. And, and, and it's always great to hear from someone who's lived through it.